Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Mike, and welcome back to AXC Garage, a channel that's built for today's Acura's Hondas and all the classic. And today we are back on our Phoenix Yellow Integra Type R Refresh Build Series. On the last episode, you saw us went ahead and did some cosmetic items all around the car, and it came out really, really good. In today's episode, we'll be jumping under the hood. Let's take a closer look and see what we got. Guys, let's take a closer look under the engine bay. And the first thing that will pop up in your eyes is this exhaust manifold. Rusty exhaust manifold is missing the original factory cover. That cover has been discontinued for many, many years. There's no way we're able to get ourselves a good cover. So what we did is we're able to find a JDM 4.1 headers. This headers is going to improve the performance and also the look because we went ahead and refinished the factory cover and it looked almost like brand new. Now this cover also come with this bracket. Most of the time, uh, the bracket from the headers uh, is broken off. So this one here actually is still intact. So we are very, very lucky able to find headers that's still very, very good condition. So let's go ahead and uh, get this car on the lift and get this exhaust manifold out of the car. So we are right here under the car. First thing we're gonna do is disconnect the oxygen sensor right over here. Then we're gonna work on the bottom section of the exhaust manifold, then work our way to the top. So the JDM 421 headers is in. Let's go ahead and get the cover. And uh, along with that, we have some new screws. It's gonna look awesome. Guys, we're gonna finish off the exhaust manifold with a brand new dipstick. So up next, we are working on the power steering pump. As you can see, it does have an aftermarket AEM pulley on a power steering pump. We try to get this back to the OEM spec. So what we have here, we got a replacement OEM pulley from Xmolar Online. Definitely give them a shout out. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, loosen up the belt tension and remove the belt and get the pump out of the way so we can get the pulley replaced.
All right, as you can see right over here, we're able to go ahead and turn the pump on its side. And now all we gotta do is uh, use the impact gun and get this out and go ahead and swap over the pulley. And just like that, the OEM pulley is back on the car. And one of the reasons we did this replacement on the car is because we didn't want to open up the line and potentially get air in the system. And while the pump is off, we want to go ahead and put a new drive belt on it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get the power steering pump mounted back up and then we can slip the belt back on. So here's a new belt, so let's go ahead and get that in. So the belt got great tension on it, let's go ahead and put the ground cable back together. Now let's go ahead and give it a quick start up. So with that quick start up, no more bell squeaking and also no exhaust leak. Let's go ahead and work on the next item. Up next, we want to change out a couple of the aftermarket item in the cooling system. Upper radiator hose, the clamp, and also the bypass hose right over here. And just barely holding on with some tie strap it's not even on there um, and then the cooling looks like it have some sort of uh, mixture between green and orange float here so what we're gonna do um, before we make any mess we want to go ahead and drain uh, the radiator so that we can go ahead and replace the hose without any mess dripping all over the place so let's go ahead and get the car up in the air and drain the fluid Next, let's go ahead and take out the upper radiator hose by removing the aftermarket clamp with a flathead screwdriver. So once this out of the way, I want to give you guys a tip. Um, so a lot of you guys, uh, when you got to take out the radiator hose, when it's stuck here, uh, oftentimes you got to want to twist it. And because the car is getting so aged, sometimes the, the upper uh, neck right over here get really brittle. And when you twist it, it could break off the neck then at that point you're gonna need a new radiator so what I typically do is I would get a razor blade and uh, just make a small incision right over here in the very top just like that and now you can just open it now the hose come out super easy all right we have our aftermarket upper radiator hose and also our bypass hose right over here uh, on the bypass hose should just twist right off the cap so what we have here is the exact replacement we have a uh, new factory clamp a factory upper radiator hose and also new bypass hose and last but not least some OEM factory cooling
All right, we're pretty much good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, fill up the radiator with some factory fluid. So we got this uh, pretty cool tool right over here. Uh, you just bolt it onto the factory location. Uh, you don't have to hold the bottle and try to uh, pour it in. Then just a lot of time you make mess here. Put this in. Let's go ahead and add the fluid. Doesn't have any leak. Once it stop, you won't have any overflow. Love this tool. At this point the radiator is full, but I still want to run the car and make sure the fan kicks on and make sure there's no air in the system. But before we do that, we have a bunch of extra cooling right over here. What I normally do is uh, if you just take out this cap here, all the fluid would come down. It does come with uh, a stopper here, but even when you put a stopper on, you will have a little bit of residual fluid comes out. What I normally do is I would squeeze the upper hose. Put this in. Unscrew it. That comes out. Now for the extra fluid, what I would do is put it back in the reservoir right over here. All right, so before we uh, start up the engine, uh, we want to go ahead and get oil change done too. So some 530 synthetic blend oil and a factory oil filter. So let's go ahead and get a car back up in the air and drain the engine oil. We got the new engine oil filter and some fresh engine oil back in the engine. So before we started, let's go ahead and work on the last item. Before we start up the car, we have this aftermarket negative terminals, aftermarket battery that's already pretty weak, and also this accessory uh, Integra Type R battery tie down. Uh, I think this is a actually pretty cool item, but unfortunately it's not matching the rest of the engine bay theme. So we want to go ahead and change out to the OEM one. So right over here, we have an Acura Reman battery. We have your factory battery tie down and also a fresh negative terminal and a couple of little accessory items that we want to put in at the same time because detail is everything. Power steering reservoir cap and a windshield washer cap.
I think we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and give it a quick start up. Wow, the engine crank right up. So at this point, we want to go ahead and let the engine warm up until the fan kicks on at least twice, making sure there's no air in the cooling system. And just like that, the engine bay cleaned up nice and this wrap up the mini refresh series on this Phoenix Yellow ITR. We want to give Carlos a big shout out, giving us an opportunity to work on this beautiful car. If you like what you see and you want to support us, you definitely want to hit that like, thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, you want to make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification because we got new videos and new content coming every single week. My name is Mike on behalf of AXC Garage. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you guys on the next one.